another video so today the video that I'm going to be doing is going to be a Q&A are you ready to be an entrepreneur um I have my best friend she's gonna be the one that's interviewing me take some polls or questions that you guys want to know the answers to so it's just a sip and snack Q&A I got my snacks right here I got me a little wine your girl loves um Stella Rose the black so are you ready to get started, Lex? Yeah. All right, so let's get started with the first question. We're not even going to make this intro long. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And let's get right into the video. Okay, so the first question was, when did you realize you wanted to start your own business? So, um, I realized I wanted to start my own business really when I was younger because I grew up like that. Like, both my parents are entrepreneurs. Scratch that. My parents own an energy company, so, and as for as long as I can remember, my dad especially, he's always had some type of business. So, pretty much, like, when I was younger, and then when I was working at McDonald's, I was like, I can't do this. So, when I was about 16, that's when I was like, for sure, I need to be my own boss. That sounds good. So, number two, one of the, somebody said, what did it take for you to start that business? The first business that I started was a nonprofit, and it took about fifteen hundred dollars. A lot of patience because when you start a nonprofit, you got to get everything approved from the government. You got to get your five hundred one c three approved. Then you have to wait for it to be put into the system. So it took about fifteen hundred dollars, a lot of patience, and just the motivation to be like. This is what I want to do. And for any of you guys who don't know what a nonprofit is, a nonprofit is a company that um, they do stuff to better the communities and the livelihoods of others. And they do not profit any money from the stuff, from the money that they have coming in. Because most of the time it's like from grants and stuff like that from the government, uh, the cities, whatever. So I started a nonprofit called Urban Students of America and that's what it took. Sounds good. So we're gonna move along to question number four. What is the best field to go into right now for starting a new business? So just based off of the pandemic, I would say anything web-based because um, technology is gonna keep going. None of the web-based businesses have been affected by COVID dramatically. Like, of course, like the shipping may be delayed or whatever, but those businesses are still making money. Um, estheticians, they're really in high demand right now. So lashes, nails, uh, beauticians, like hair salons, facials, um, body contouring. That's a really big one to go into right now. That's just based off the research that I've done. But I'm pretty sure some other fields that you can go into right now that can foster you good results. Okay, well, moving on to question number five. What marketing and advertisement ideas did you use? Um, so for me, I like to do like a lot of leave behinds, like little keepsakes. I love doing like the pins, like with our name, number and stuff on them. Um, like the Bluetooth speakers. I like those. It's like, it's the merchandise for me. Like I love giving away merchandise to my customers and to supporters. So that's one thing. Um, photo shoots. Photoshoots are a big one. A lot of people like to see visuals. That's another one. Okay. Well, number six says, would you prefer to go into a business as a sole proprietor or with a partner? Um. So my nonprofit, I did go into my nonprofit with a partner. Um. And there's nothing wrong with having a partner. I definitely think it it helps you lessen the load because it's stressful being an entrepreneur, minority business owner. I'm a double minority because I'm a woman and I'm African American. Um, so I definitely don't think it's anything wrong with going into business with a partner. Y'all just have to have the same motivation, the same goals, stuff like that, because 
it can be like it can be stressful my current business which is elite which is the business that is going to be a mobile lounge amongst other things that is 100% owned by me but I do have silent partners um and I'm pretty sure I will be picking up partners as I go along like my sister like she's going to be invested my best friend she's going to be invested but I don't know I really wouldn't call them partners because like whether they names is on the legal documents or not whatever I got they got so like yeah I guess it just depends on your preference and the type of business that you're trying to start well, that really sounds good. So, <laughs> moving on to number seven. Someone asks, do you have to go to school to be an entrepreneur? <clears throat> no. No, you do not have to go to school to be an entrepreneur. I currently am in school pursuing a bachelor's in business administration with an emphasis on entrepreneurship. But you do not have to go to school. My father, very educated man, extremely educated man he does not have a college degree but he has um opened a very successful energy business and he does not have a degree like he started the energy business with no degree um and before even before the energy business he had plenty of other successful businesses just when his interest grew that's when his businesses grew to a different level. You do not have to have a, a degree. I do. I am pursuing a degree because, yes, I want to be an entrepreneur, but I also have a passion for law. So this is leading up to me getting my law degree. So I'm going to be Tiana Johnson Esquire. <laughs> okay. Degrees all the way around. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so moving on to question eight. Someone asks, how long does it take to get a business started? Um, that's going to go back to again, how, what type of business you're going into. So like for me, getting the nonprofit started took me in total about six months to get all my documents back for me to be in a database as an approved 501c3, about six months. Um, and then just like getting all your ducks in a row, like all your bills lined up, all your grants, your events, like all that stuff lined up, getting it. Rolling took me about six months for elite i've been working on elite for a long time now just because when i presented it to the world i wanted it to be right and even as i'm going through the journey everything is still not right so to get it up and going is going to depend on you your journey and your motivation but i'll probably say give yourself about six months to a year to start seeing like a constant flow in your business well that definitely makes sense so we're moving on to number nine. Um, someone asks, how long does it take to see a return on your investment? <clears throat> the lower the startup cost, the usually is you're going to see a faster return on your investment. So right now I'm in the process of, process of standing up three young women to um, become estheticians. So like getting them on their way to becoming their own bosses. And I would say to start up, each young woman is gonna cost about $1,500. However, if they're doing lashes and they already have like a clientele because some of these young girls will have a clientele for doing other things, then they will see a return in about a month, um, between four to eight weeks. Um, however, for bigger projects, business issues, it's gonna take a little bit longer. Like for my party lounge business, um, my mobile lounge, I'm sorry, I easily spent out four grand getting my website together, buying merchandise, getting my photo shoot together, um, getting my name registered, all of that stuff, opening up bank accounts, putting money in bank accounts. Like, I still have not seen a return on that investment, but I have not started selling merch yet and I have not ran any events. So, the smaller your business, the faster you're probably going to see a return. But the bigger your business, the longer it's going to take you to see a return. But the return, when you wait longer, is going to be a lot bigger than if you got your return, like, almost instantly. <laughs> okay. And the last and final question, well, someone has said, I just started a sex shop business and I'm having trouble attracting new customers. What do you, what do you advise that I do? 
So, baby, <laughs> sex sales, okay? So if you're having problems attracting new customers, then you're advertising, you need to do different advertising because sex alone sells. I was just in a sex shop last week. So I would definitely say, and I would be the first one to tell you, I am not into advertising and marketing. I have good ideas, but when it comes to putting a face to the marketing, that's not something that I do. Um, that's like, I leave that totally up to my sister. But I would definitely say that if you're having a problem attracting new customers, then you need to come up with some new advertising mechanisms. I'll definitely say like leave behinds or like giveaways. Um, I know for me, one thing that I love to do is like add a little something extra in my customers packages. Like my first 50 customers are going to get something extra in their packages. Just for, this is a thank you. Um, customers definitely come and shop again if they feel appreciated. So I would definitely say that your target market, that's another thing that you need to look at. Like typically the ages between 17 and um, 40, they're going to be really heavily uh, sedated into your sex stores. So I definitely say you need to target between those age groups. And it's really tricky because you have so many different personalities in those age groups. You have people just trying to be fun. Then you have people that's kind of like, okay, I'm done being fun. I may be, I don't know, I may be like withdrawing myself from sex for a few months. And that's probably like your mid 20s. And then you get into your early 30s and it's just, Maybe I don't have time for sex, but I know what I like. And then you get into your 40s or mid-30s to your early 40s, and it's just like this is something to spice up the bedroom. You have to be able to attract those people, but do it in a different way. But you have to be able to capture all of their attentions, even though they might be looking for the sex shop for different reasons. So that's definitely something else that you need to look at. And just do your research. Like, um, I do do not do anything without doing research first so definitely say do your research and i think that's all the questions we got ain't it yeah only 10 so we picked 10 um and i like doing that though i like doing that i like to hear like what y'all got questions about and y'all i'm still learning so i'm pretty sure there's a lot of people out there that can teach me something you know what i'm saying but if y'all have any other questions, I would love to do this again with y'all. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I want to give a big thank you to my best friend, Lex, for giving me the questions. Thank you, girl. You're welcome. And other than that, um, I'll see y'all in the next video. I'm really not sure what it's going to be yet, but I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye. Bye. <laughs>